hi everybody. So I want to welcome you to the Digital Dish, and we have a very exciting episode today. One of my favorite topics. Um, we're going to be talking about how yoga can help us in our social media obsessed lives, and we have two awesome guests, and maybe a third if Kelly can join us. And if she can't, then we have Paige here to speak on her behalf. But um, my name is Lisa Beyer. I'm the author of Social PR Secrets and also teach a class at UF on social media management and work in the social media world and PR world every day. And I would not be able to survive without yoga in my life. And I am here with my co-host, Kathy. Kathy, I'll let you do your own introduction and then we'll introduce our guests. Thanks, Lisa. Namaste. <laughs> um, I wanted to, you know, my name is Kathy Hackle. Um, I am the Hispanic marketing, um, the director of Hispanic marketing for Boom Social. So I work with Kim Garst. Uh, I also teach social media. Um, I'm very involved in the live video world um, in the social media world. That is pretty crazy. I am currently uh, 38 weeks, 38 weeks pregnant. So yeah, and I love like especially when I'm pregnant, I'm a total yogi. I like it's the one thing <laughs> that helps me kind of get centered. Um, so you know, I yeah, that's that's why I'm so excited about the uh, about the topic today. When Lisa said that, I was like, oh, let's totally do this. So so yeah, yeah I'm so happy we have an, Annie and Paige here. So <laughs> yeah, um, so Annie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then Paige introduce yourself, and we'll get started with some of the the questions and see if our audience has any questions too. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Annie. Um, I started my yoga journey about 10 years ago, and I was a full-time Ashtangi, and then kind of since then evolved, and I started picking up other styles of yoga. Um, I teach uh, te teacher trainings in Thailand and Bali, and also now I am part of a, a startup that is um, as well related to yoga. Um, Right now I'm living in Sedona and studying Tibetan Buddhism. So that's what I do in between work. And so basically sleep, eat, Buddhist talk, yoga. And that's, that's what I do every day. Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here. And thanks for having me, Lisa and Kathy. Awesome. Maybe you can, you'll be able to give us some good tips. And Paige, oh. <laughs> tell us about you too. Hi, my name is Paige Held and I'm the owner of The Yoga Joint. We have three studios here in South Florida. Uh, we just signed our lease for number four um, in Miami. And um, I have four kids. And so I'm a mom and a busy mom and a busy owner. And if I didn't have yoga and meditation, I would probably not be here on, on this call because <laughs> I would probably be dead. So yoga and meditation saved my life. I started, um, I'm 38 and I started when I was 16. So I've been doing it a long, long time and it shaped and molded me for who I am. And I see that it shapes and is molding my children, which is really special to see how they act and interact and treat themselves and treat each other. So I love yoga and I'm so happy to be a part of this. Awesome. So there's two sides for um, when it comes to social media, there's, I think, a very positive side and then there's a negative side. So the positive side, and that's why basically I'm in business today, because I help companies, um, businesses use social media to get publicity and um, market their businesses. And then social media helps us stay connected. So let's first focus on the positive side and then take us to, you know, the, the kind of the negative side and how um, our lives have become so obsessed with social media, business and personal. Mm -hmm. um, so Annie and, and, um, and Paige, just share with us like how you use um, social media on the positive side for your personal and business brand. Absolutely. Um, I'll start first. Um, so I use social media with mainly blogs, Facebook and Instagram. Um, I find it's like a perfect way to spread knowledge or at least share what what we're learning every day. Um, there's really no better tools now that it's like instantly if I post something online, I get feedback and I'm able to communicate with with everyone. And it doesn't have to be people that I know. It's like really connecting with strangers but then becoming friends and and I think that's a beautiful connection that we would never have unless we have social media and I think if using it spreading positive messages it really touched people's heart like on a day-to-day -day basis and that to me is so beautiful and I love it for that reason I couldn't agree more with Annie I feel the same way um 
I love doing the Instagram challenges for yoga I, because I love getting the messages that people send, how they wouldn't be able to, for whatever reason, whether it's um, financially or their timing or their jobs or their own children and their own busy lives where they can't necessarily get to a yoga studio. So they go on mm -hmm. and they follow all these amazing inspirational people doing yoga and meditation. And it's given them this opportunity to learn something very valuable and bring it into their lives where if we didn't have social media, they wouldn't be able to do it. So I also, I think it's amazing. I've made amazing connections with people and I think it's an amazing tool. I feel like if um, we didn't have social media just in the yoga space, I mean, I'm able to still follow you Paige and follow Annie and follow all these yogis around the world. And I get inspiration in my newsfeed every day that like really and truly helps me. Like I'm having a bad moment and I'll get a message from, you know, it, it, and it just makes a huge positive impact in my day. So it's not even, you know, on the mat or in the class, it's just getting that, that inspiration uh, and being able to pass on that inspiration for, for everybody. Right. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And I think that, you know, for example, when, when you see those positive messages and things of that nature, it, it can really helps you because especially with Lisa and myself, which are very, you know, we're very involved in social media. There's a lot of criticism. There's a lot of negative stuff to, going on too. So when you see those positive things kind of makes you stop for a second and say, okay, breathe in. This is what matters. Yeah. The, the daily reminders. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure, I mean, I'm now I go to yoga to escape social media and take a break. And when I don't, I kind of feel like, you know, just my skin is crawling. And Paige and Annie, I'm sure that, you know, you're teaching classes every day or retreats and you see these professionals like us come in. We must come in looking one way and walk out looking another. How do you see, how do you see that yoga makes a positive impact on, on somebody that has such a frantic profession? Um. It, it's so beautiful seeing the before and after. It's like you know, those major transformation and only can be done in like 60 minutes. And what I find is so beautiful is that creating a space for yourself. And it's, it's not a way that is like selfish. It's really just checking in, checking in like where are you at this moment and maybe things that you thought that matters before class, really it just kind of fizzle away. Like yeah. after Shavasana, it's just kind of like, why was I even stressing about it? And it's, it's just that, that bubble that you can just really see things as it is instead of adding feelings into it, adding, you know, everyday life, like children, husband, kids, like that can really just, you know, boggle the mind. And, you know, stepping on the mat and just you and your breath and the posture. I mean, having a good teacher to guide you through a journey. And really at the end, you come out and you're like, wow, things that really you think it was like, you know, matter so much. You just kind of be like, oh, I'm just going to grab a juice have a nice coffee and then, you know, go back and, and yeah, I, I, I think it's beautiful. I think it's a really good tool to, to help ease the mind. It's interesting because um, social media has become a part of my classes now um, in the, in the regard where I, I talk about it. So I've been saying, you know, we, one of the discussions with my inner circle of girlfriends of my girl tribe is that, you know, oh, I, I see on social media that I didn't get invited to this or I, I, I didn't get mm -hmm. this and it makes them feel bad or I see it with my children. And so I, I say to, in class now, yogis, remember, no feeling is final. And we, if we continue to think about the, the things we've read or the sutras and how Yoga is now. We're so used to looking outside and seeing what everybody is doing to dictate a feeling that's coming from within us. So let's just press pause on all of that so we can press play on how we can clear some of that up. Because although social media is an amazing tool, it does bring about these emotions inside of us that we didn't even know we had before. It's like mm -hmm. we're feeling, you know, jealousy at other people's lives. And we have to just remind ourselves that that is what people are choosing to put on social media. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's important, although it can be a, a, such an amazing tool, it can also make us feel emotions where when we go in yoga, we can tap into these emotions. And like Annie said, just recognize that it's going to pass and no feeling is final. And then we leave and we feel completely, you know, refreshed. It's literally like we deleted all those emotions, <laughs> press refresh and, and went on our day. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have to say the feeling of hopelessness that I have when I go into a yoga class yeah. and then the feeling of <laughs> hope that I come out with, it's like you go through a tunnel, you walk in through the, the door into yoga and you're in through a tunnel and you come out on the other end. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing journey, just that one hour, but it doesn't even have to be an hour. It could be 15 oh, minutes. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it can, it can be like, you know, just five minutes of breathing. Yeah. And, and that's yoga. Like, cause we, yes, we create a space like yoga studio for yoga, but really that is just a small aspect of what yoga really brings to our lives. It can be just sitting quietly in silence and tapping into what's happening in the mind or just breathing. Like these all being nice to others. Like these are all elements of yoga and it has to kind of like in combination of the whole and you really experience the bliss of it. Um, and that one of the best way it is through postures. You know, you go into the mat and you create a space for yourself. But remember that the, why it feels so good is because once you get out, that feeling That's remains great. with you. Yeah. yeah, the posture remains with you. The breath remains with you. And then you're nicer to others and others are nicer to you. And it's just, you know, it comes full circle. And you feel um, like, for example, with me, when I go in, you know, usually I'm really stressed out. I'm thinking about the pregnancy. I'm thinking about work. I'm thinking about all the stuff that's going on. But when I come out, I feel one with my body. You know, it, it feels like, okay, if I finally get to connect with my baby in a, in a way that I didn't take the time during the day to do. And that to me, that's why I love yoga, especially, you know, I love it in general, but I love it, especially when I'm pregnant, because it, it's that moment where I'm like, I connect, I connect with my baby in a way that I don't really take the time to do during the crazy, you know, business hours. So Oops. definitely. Oh, let's see. We've got Lisa. <laughs> once Lisa, I'll, I'll bring her back in. No worries. Right? <laughs> okay. okay. She's coming back in. So, um, so one thing I, I want to add to what Paige is saying is like, yeah, like social media, we have to differentiate what people are choosing to put online and mm -hmm. then what is actually happening. Because yeah, like if, if we choose to see these filters, you know, like Instagram, all of a sudden everyone's photo is like, you know, beautiful and and th that doesn't represent reality so we have to tap in to make sure that we know that there is that one reality that everyone's trying to make pretty which is okay you know we all want to look at beautiful things but then we also have to make sure that we know that that is not reality mm -hmm. like we have to choose just like anything we have to choose to go for the positive aspects of social media attract to inspiring people inspiring quotes and then not get boggled up with like, did I get an invitation to a Facebook event? Yeah, that doesn't matter right. at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And that can go for all ages. I have a teenage daughter and um, I mean, I see her struggling with different things that are because of social me media, fear of missing out. And I mean, just the whole gamut, but it, it's not just for teenagers or kids. It happens to, you know, all ages. Um, you know, just the, the whole fear of missing out in social media and what that causes psychologically, <laughs> right? Yeah, I see it too with my kids. It's just, I'm, it, sometimes I'm just like, okay, off, <laughs> yeah. off, off, off. Yes, definitely. But, you know, go take a yoga So, class. <laughs> and just working in the social media profession, um, public relations, any type of creative, I mean, we're basically on demand having to write creative things, be creative, think of ideas, think of concepts, think of campaigns, write yeah. books, write eBooks. And I, I tell the story a lot, how when I went to write my book, Social PR Secrets, I had the hardest time getting started. I hired a coach and he kind of got to know me and he said, Lisa, what I want you to do for the next 30 days is on the, your writing days, drop your daughter off at school, go straight to a yoga class, then go straight to the closest coffee shop and write for two hours. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> that sounds like the best thing <laughs> I, advice I've ever had. So this is what my business coach told me to do and I'm going to do it. And, you know, I got my book done in like three weeks versus whatever my timeline was like two months. So yeah. I just, th the writing just poured out because my brain was just at that space, you know, at a clear space to be creative. And I just think those little breaks that we can give ourselves during the day, you don't have to write a book to get that benefit, just to mm -hmm. give yourself those little breaks. Maybe Annie and Paige, you could give us some ideas of what we can do just ourselves on a daily basis or, you know, through yeah. yoga on a mm -hmm. weekly basis, monthly basis. What are some tips? To create space in your life, right? With yoga? Yeah, just to do, your, do it on your own if you're working at your desk yeah. or, you yeah. know, taking a class here or there. 
Mm -hmm. I personally believe in just simple stretches because what happened is like we we think that we need to go into these like crazy contortionist movement to call it yoga but really it's like if, if your work is like computer based which mine is quite a lot outside of doing my asana and meditation it's like just you know a big stretch open these channels up open your heart and and the the poses the stretches simple stretches is actually gonna bring energy and and depending what you need right like if you're sitting all all day long just standing up and walking you open some of your your, your low abdominals and your pelvic muscles and and that's just going to bring energy creative creative energy um if you know stretching isn't your first choice really just go for a walk in silence the most important part is silence in my opinion because you know a social media we're constantly having other people influencing you or even music music is beautiful but it's still distracting the mind so even just walking in silence listening to your own personal dialogue you're gonna go like oh why am i talking to myself like that and then eventually kind of fizzle out letting the mind just kind of be peaceful and then you allow creativity comes into your mind and that is why i think you finish your book so fast because <laughs> there's no mental junk in there <laughs> right right, right? yeah <laughs> I just want to show you my, I don't know if you can see my um, shirt. So heavily, <laughs> heavily meditated. <laughs> heavily meditated. That's awesome. So That's awesome. So <laughs> Sorry, Paige, what were you going to say? Because I'm sure you have some great tips too. No, no, no. I was just going to elaborate as well on what Annie was saying. Um, when, if you're, if you're, I also have to be behind the desk a lot, you know, running the businesses. And um, that was something new to me because when you go from one, mm, being one yeah. owner of one studio and then to opening up more businesses and you take on partners and whatnot, you're behind a desk a lot. So I found that if I just for, even if it was just for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, just stopped for a minute, turned around, closed my eyes, did at least five, 10, 20 deep breaths, either Ujjayi breathing or just follow four seconds in, hold, four seconds out, hold. It really started to shift. I would, I, you know, what's cool uh, on the, uh, as far as social media, there's all sorts of really yeah. cool apps now that can, it, like I have a movement app. So it tells me if I haven't yeah. moved in a certain amount of time. So I would just get up, do a little lap around the office, you know, do a couple just side stretches, maybe a forward fold. And that just rejuvenates you. And even though I know that the brain is not a muscle, I, if I started to think about it like a muscle, like, okay, Paige, you have to strengthen this muscle. Like you're starting to go down. Let's mm -hmm. just start to bring yourself up. So let's try not to go below the line. Let's try to stay above with positive thinking, positive thoughts. It really will shift you in your day. You know, the more you vibrate high, the more you're going to feel better. The more you vibrate low, the worse you're going to feel. So during the day, if you have to sit behind the desk, those are little things. Also, lots of water, watch what yeah. you eat. It's so easy to just snack behind mm -hmm. the yeah. desk, you know? So if we can shift what we're eating, that'll help us too. What yeah. about yoga retreats and yoga vacations? I think that's the trend now that I see happening is not just yoga teachers are going away for a yoga retreat, but it's just a way to escape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up because I think that's what actually everyone needs. And and yoga retreats doesn't have to associate with like a luxurious retreat. Mm -hmm. It's not like checking into a five star, six star hotel where it's gonna break your bank when you go home and you get more stressed out. Um, it can simply just be like going on the weekend, like somewhere somewhere away from your usual habitat. You know, like not the usual coffee shop you go to. Like go somewhere with nature maybe three days, maybe two days, or if you can afford it, go longer. But really, it's just to give yourself that that time just to be you. Yeah, like, step on the mat, breathe. If you don't feel like doing poses, don't. Just sit there and just enjoy nature. And I think with that, when you come out of your retreat, you'll be 10 times, 100 times more productive because so your you mind is like completely clear cash. Right. You, you totally come back and you're like, I just got all these amazing business ideas. Now let's put it to work. And when I was on my, like when you're on the retreat, you, you, it's not just like, oh, I'm not going to think about my life. No, really. It's just to, to see, prioritize what's important to you. 
-hmm. And all of a sudden you start like narrowing down like, oh, actually like 10 of the things that I thought was important wasn't, but this is really what's resonating with me. And then, and then you channel the energy. What is it that wherever the focus goes, energy goes. And that to me is like, I, I go on retreats every year. Like um, I just did a, my first silent retreat uh, um, a month ago here in Sedona and I come out and I'm just like, everything changed. Yeah, for the better. <laughs> and I think you can create your own retreat. It doesn't have to be an official retreat just no. to put yourself on your own retreat or, you know, one day away. I, I just started doing this this year where once a month I check myself into um, a, day, a, a spa like at a hotel mm -hmm. and I get there at nine in the morning and I work from there for the whole day and I'm just in silence and I get a treatment and I have lunch and mm -hmm. I leave at five and I come out a new person and it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> I love that idea. <laughs> I'll pitching that to my husband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I need this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's, you know, it's fun to go on a bit on a mini vacation and go mm -hmm. drinking and all that, but you know, it's also a lot more um, productive for your brain and your body to get a, a healthy getaway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I'm sure as Annie probably feels this way too, as a lot of yoga teachers, we get, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't have time for yoga. I don't have time to meditate. Yeah. And I always tell people, I promise you, I can't guarantee a lot in this life, but I can guarantee that the meditation and the yoga yeah. is going to give you time because it clears out all the clutter. So you think that you have all this stuff and while now as a society, it's like, it's almost like we're wearing um, busyness as this badge of honor. Yeah, I feel yeah. like, oh, yeah. if, if I'm more busy, that means I'm more important. And people put that on me a lot. They say, oh, you must be so busy. You must be so busy. You have four kids. You have four studios. You have an online. You go to retreats. I go, I'm not busy. Yeah. I'm blessed. And I, I get to do what I love. And it, it's great. Like, so that meditation and yoga it makes your mind clear. So therefore you can get up, you can, for my life, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can make lunches for the kids. I can get the carpool going. I can get my emails done. I can get on my step or go to step. I can go to my yoga class. I can go start work or whatever your day looks like. But if I didn't have all that, I, I get very mm -hmm. ADD fast. So if I don't do yoga and take the time to meditate, Mm -hmm. I would be more unclear and then I would be feel stuck because I would be analyzing. When we analyze, I feel paralyzed. So I feel more clear and more like to project down my path when I stick to yoga and I stick to meditation. You know, my grandmother who raised me, she used to say to me all the time, you know, Paige, the best way to, to not get out of shape mentally, physically, and spiritually is to stay in shape <laughs> mentally, physically, and spiritually. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's really good. Nice. So it's yeah, like, that's it's a little yeah. bit, yeah. She was so wise at beyond her years. It was like little bit by little bit by little bit. If you just take, take the tools every day, instead of letting everything pile up, you, you, mm -hmm. you get so yeah. much more done. And in addition to that is like that little by little, because we, we always think that we have so much to do in the future. Really yeah. like the only yeah. moment right. that you're living is now. And in, if you can just check in is like right now, what can I do at my best ability? without stressing about it, and then you get so much more done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because no, the worry doesn't change the outcome. Yeah, well, it changed so the present, which stresses you out. <laughs> yeah. Right, true. Exactly. I love that, um, Paige, exactly. what you said, analyze turns into paralyze. Like, that is so true. I've never even looked at it that way. Yeah, we. I find myself doing it, you know, about business decisions, or even on my mat. If I really am learning a new pose and just because after 20 years, I like to try to switch it up, you know, and if I'm doing a new pose and I analyze it, I don't get it. And then I feel paralyzed <laughs> and I think, what am I doing? Like, this is not what yoga was intended for. Just yeah. be in the moment, have fun. Don't be a destination addict. Yeah. Just, just be in the moment. All these things I have to mm -hmm. constantly remind myself. But if I didn't have yoga and the inspiration that I get from social media, I, I just- I guess it's all life. about balance because we need social media and we need yoga and we really can't live without either because what, you know, there's this nomophobia where it's the fear of <laughs> or, um, not being able to live without your mobile device, which now I mean, it, yeah. it's, 
it's really true. I mean, we can't really, I think there was a poll on Expedia, 60% of the people said that they would not go on a vacation without their mobile device. And at first I was like, that's crazy. But now, you know, it's like, you have to be able to connect somehow to your family. I mean, it's, it's really our, our lifeline. Right. It's sad to say, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. To me, I, I really, I, I look at my family, like my sister has two kids and you know, running around juggling and she, she makes time for you, for herself. And you have to, yeah. and, and how she uses through social media, you know, she gets inspiration from people, motivates her and she's in better shape than before she had two kids. And, and that to me is like, how do you create time? And that's, be, that is when you pay yourself first, mm -hmm. you get up and you pay yourself first through right. meditation. You know, instead of drinking that coffee, you know, you sit silently, you meditate, you do your asana, and that's that's yoga coffee right there. Right. True. It's like um, True. on the airlines when they say they're giving you the instructions before they take off mm -hmm. and they, they tell the parents to put the mask on themselves first before the exactly. child. You have to save yeah, yourself exactly. first, literally. Yeah, you have to. You're no good to anybody if you're not good to yourself. I, I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I just started meditating, I would say, like, six months ago. I mean, even though, I guess, technically in a yoga class at the end, there it, it is a form of meditation, but I really didn't look at it that way. Or I was like, oh, I'm meditating at the end of yoga. I don't have to do anything more to, you know, to get the benefit. But I really wish I would have started a long time ago because I see the immediate difference it can make. I mean, within the first week, within the first day, you, you can automatically get recharged from it. And I think that that really is um, a secret to successful business is meditation and being able to think clear. And, you know, these ECOs that never get any sleep and are workaholics are really in the long run going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. They're hell. Right. And I Right. Yeah. And I want to add two things. Um, you know, one of the things I used to, I used to work at a hospital here at the uh, university of Florida and they have a very big, a robust arts and um, it's uh, arts, arts and something medicine program. And um, they have a lot of like gentle yoga for cancer patients. And it's amazing. I mean, when I've been to the classes just to kind of see, because I used to write the newsletter, it was amazing and beautiful to see, you know, because it was gentle and everything. But th the way they came in and then the way they left, I mean, they're still battling cancer, but the impact of just that connection to their body was beautiful, you know? So I, I just wanted to bring that back, you know, talk about that because it's exactly what we're talking about. It's the stress and everything, but these are people that are fighting, you know, cancer and they're finding so much peace when they're doing this and they're taking that time for themselves. So it was just, for me, it was so beautiful to watch just to see them go in. And then when they leave, they're still battling the same, you know, the same demon, let's say, but they're much more, you know, they're in a better place. So definitely. Right. Well, yeah, I think yeah. we're almost out of time, but I know Kathy, I'm oh, going to yeah. ask this question for you. So ah. Kathy is doing a week and she would love to know, do you have any secret <laughs> yoga poses to have her baby come early? <laughs> any tips for her? Get this baby out. <laughs> no, yeah. Kathy. Well, I think you have four kids. Kathy, yeah. I, go for it. <laughs> well, my husband's also an OB. And he swears, 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 swears up and down that women who practice yoga have a much better mm -hmm. birth experience and birth than women who don't. And he's, he doesn't just say that because, because of me, but because mm -hmm. he sees it every day, the yogis in, you know, day in and day out. So just remember that Ujjayi breath and remember to send all the energy <laughs> down, down, down to the pelvic <laughs> floor and, and just Put your mind to it. You'll do it. You'll, you'll be great. Thanks, be Paige. Great. <laughs> do those well, squats. I was going to say yeah. the squats. Yeah. I got my little ball and everything. I've got it already. Yeah. Like, I'm bringing it to the hospital. Oh, they don't have the little balls, but I'm bringing it. I don't care. You know, it's coming with me. So. Oh, good. good. Should we see real quick if we have any questions from our live viewers? I see Virginia is – maybe she's still on here. Are you still here, Virginia? Hi, if you are. Does anybody have any – Oh, she is. She is. Hi. Hi. Virginia, you're such a good yogi and such a good social media marketer. Do you have any questions or comments? Let's see what she has to say. Nice, nice to meet you, Virginia. too. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 
we're about ready to wrap it up unless you, Kathy, is there anything else you can think of that, or Paige or Annie that we can bring into the conversation that we haven't covered yet? We can always do a part two. Yeah, that'd oh, be great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the next series we can talk about like tools and how using social media can really connect us with, you know, specific like which yoga vacation, how to do yoga retreats and destinations and and also how to create your own retreats. You know, it doesn't have to have to be in a group or anything. You can like what Lisa did, like check in once a month and I think that's I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> I love right. that. Yeah. <laughs> You guys can join me. We'll just all be in yeah. silence. My husband's not gonna like you, Lisa. <laughs> He's like, you gotta go to the spot every month. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. Um, Lisa, it looks like we have a question. Let's see. If you have ten, if you minutes. have ten minutes, what are the best poses? Okay, Oops. go for it. Okay, I'm gonna do mine. Um, fourth fold. Um, heart opening. So either either uh, cobra, um, upward facing dog. Um, head stand either to a wall, shoulder stand, twist, and shavasana. Never skip right shavasana, like <laughs> that is the king of all poses. Yeah, so um, yeah, those are mine. I would also say if you're sitting all day to do it, it, it depends if you're in your office and you can't do something like a sun salutation because you don't have the space, like seated mm -hmm. twist getting into the abdominals, into the spine, if you're having to sit, um, any sort of like knee into the chest when you twist, if you have to stand or lie on the ground, if you can go up against the wall and do some inversions to get go your brain going would be great. Forward folds are great. Seated folds are great. Anything mm -hmm. like that. And if you're working in an environment where it's, um, you can sit on the floor, that would be nice too. That really opens the okay. hips instead of sitting in a chair. Yeah, the ball, you know, I'm I'm okay with sitting on the yoga ball, but I think sitting on the floor, either with a, a wall supporting, but just letting the knees fall to the side, that just naturally using gravity to open your hips. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I sat the whole day at my desk on deadline working and doing conference calls. And I ended up doing a class at the end of the day, Orange Theory, not yoga. And um, at the end of the Orange Theory class, they had a three minute plank challenge that I was just like, I am so bad at plank challenges. There's no way I'm going to make it one minute. But but the penalty was if you didn't do the three minutes, you had to do burpees and all these other things. Ooh, like, okay, yeah. I'm going to try to make it the three minutes. <laughs> and I swear the way that I did it was I just closed my eyes and plank and just like went into this like deep thought of meditation. And before I knew it, the three minutes was up. And it was, I, I swear that really helped, you know, kind of like me stop thinking about the problem and just like get inside my, outside of my head actually was is maybe right. what it did. Mm -hmm. But I also, during the plank, I did twists with my feet. Paige, when you're practicing, you do it all the time. When you're doing yeah. up dog, down dog, how you <laughs> your feet and I got that from you I started doing it because it actually feels so good so yeah. during the plank I was doing that and my back was like click 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 like so you could tell from sitting all day yeah. my spine mm -hmm. just needed that like ringing movement. out release yeah definitely yeah. we need the movement yeah um Nava's asking what does the pose look like which pose Nava I don't know what she's talking about Maybe she'll put in here, but well, oh, we're we're oh gosh, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> sorry, Nova. It's when you lie down on the floor, like you're sleeping, but but you're not turning to the side, so it's like that final rest, um, the pose. Best. So, on your back, have your feet as wide as your mat, and then have your palms face up to the sky and close your eyes. And I love putting something, um, over my eyes mm -hmm. so you can yeah. really rest the, the mind, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It is. I did a 30 day yoga challenge and I was like, you know what? I had my mat in my office and I, some days I just did corpse pose, shavasana and nothing else. And that counted. It, it counts. <laughs> yeah, oh, it yeah. counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before we wrap it up, if, unless there's any other questions, Paige and Annie, why don't you tell us what's next on the horizon for you? Are there any teacher trainings, any um, special events that you're doing? I know Paige, just from following you, you're, you're doing online classes now, which are exciting. And now I can, mm -hmm. use, I can actually take them up here in Orlando. I haven't tried yet, but can yeah. I? Yay. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's the yoga joint mm -hmm. And, uh, we're doing 
our we do a few retreats a year. So we're doing our annual Costa Rica in Ooh, July. Oh, that's where I'm from. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. And we also have a teacher that works for us that's from there. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. So the yogajoint.com is our website. It shows all our teacher trainings. We do a bunch of teacher trainings a year, level one, level two retreats. We have our online and um, we do festivals and things like that. We travel. So just check out the website. Cool. Did I get um, it right? I wrote down. I wrote the website. Did I yes, get it right? Thank okay. you. Awesome. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, for me, I'm I'm doing um, a retreat in Bali in December. So, oh it, and I'm gonna call it the Your Future Buddha Retreat because it's oh, gonna be with Tibetan Buddhist talk as well as yoga asana. Um, more information is gonna be on my website nlyoga.com. Um, right now, there's not too much info yet just because I'm putting it together but um, I'm just really want to weave together the the ancient knowledge of Tibetan Buddhist Buddhism with yoga I think that's been helping me so much and I just want to spread that out yay yeah. and Annie do you teach daily classes in Sedona is that where you're teaching now if people are watching from Sedona mm, in Sedona not at the moment just because mm -hmm. I'm kind of having a nomadic life right now i'm going to mexico soon um and also um taking classes with my teacher and teaching down there so so don't i'm really just enjoying the the vortex the spiritual energy <laughs> i can feel it i can totally feel it if you're in south florida i have to vouch for the yoga joint i i just book my hotel right across the street from the yoga joint in Fort Lauderdale, just so I can go to as many classes as possible when I'm down there. Oh. You have, all of the instructors are amazing. Paige and Kelly are the owners. If you take one of their classes, great, but it's a must if you're in Fort Lauderdale. That's Thank awesome. you, Lisa. Yeah. Um, as for me, you can catch me online um, or I'm writing my third edition of Social PR Secrets. And Kathy, I don't know if you're going to be with us next week because you might be delivering. <laughs> my due date is May 6th, so I should okay. be here on Cinco de Mayo, which is my birthday. So okay. oh, I'll see. <laughs> so excited for you, Kathy. Yeah. Hey. So let, let us know if the squats help. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm trying, I mean, I've been trying every acupressure, acupuncture, you name it. So oh. we're, we're trying to get things going. <laughs> yeah. We'll be sending you positive energies. Please do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, namaste, everybody. Thank you so much for namaste. joining us. Namaste. Namaste. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.